everyone. I'm Adam Brown, and this is Shell Point Today for Wednesday, August 31st. On today's show, Terry Kolath will visit with Dan Warner to learn about a Writer's Workshop Academy class coming soon. And we'll get another great recipe from Ruth Duber in her What's Cooking at Shell Point series. But first, we'd like to make you aware of a couple of volunteer opportunities. The Train Room is looking for docents for the upcoming season. Have fun telling stories about trains and Florida. It's so easy and training is provided. Also, Adopt the Road needs a few more helping hands to help keep Shell Point Boulevard clean and beautiful. One day a month commitment with a great group of volunteers is all that it takes. For these and other volunteer opportunities, call Beth Crenshaw at 454-2290 for more information. And finally, we'd like to let you know that the community thrift store is in need of some clothing donations. If you're looking to make room in your closet for some new fashions this fall, then now would be a great time to part with those items that are still in good condition and drop them off with Erica May, manager of the store. You can give her a call for more information at 225-6529. When you're putting creativity into your writing, how do you know that your reader will want to keep on reading? How do you get what you write to stick in their minds long after? Well, News Press columnist Dan Warner of Turban can help you write where one word leads to another, one page leads to another, and so on. You'll have fun with words in the Writer's Workshop Academy class starting September 12th. Here's Terry Kolath and Dan Warner. Hello, I'm Terry Kolath. I'm here today with Dan Warner of Turban. And we're talking about a class he's doing for us, a writer's workshop in the Academy of Lifelong Learning this fall semester. You may know him from his column in the news press. We know him as a great writing instructor. Thanks for joining me, Dan. I'm glad to be here. And thank you for taking another class and sharing with us. We have such a strong um, urge here to learn how to write. Yeah, there are some good writers here. They're really good writers, actually. <laughs> Okay. Do we know what makes something good if we're just readers and not writers? Oh, absolutely. There, I mean, there are a lot of signs. One of them is that you want to keep reading. Yeah. And actually, that's the main one. And that's one thing that the writer <clears throat> needs to work on, needs to make sure that, that, that one word leads to another, one sentence leads to another, one paragraph leads to another, a chapter leads to another, so the readers just move to keep going. Doesn't want to put it down yet. Do you have techniques? Are, are there? Oh, there are a million techniques. <laughs> <laughs> you know them all, right? Because I love your columns. Keep me, re keep me going. You know, to the end, and 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 produce emotion in me, which I think is a real talent. Well, that's the that's the other big sign. If you can, <clears throat> if the reader can feel something inside of herself uh -huh. that <clears throat> that resonates, then the writer and the reader connect. And there are all kinds of ways to do that, and we're going to look at some of those ways. You know what else I love about a good writer? A good writer helps me think things through that might have just gone by in this fast-paced life, you know, to feel the richness of life. Right. That, first, the writer has to identify that in himself or herself. Okay. Okay. And, you know, it's those fleeting thoughts <clears throat> that, that we let go that the good writer captures <clears throat> and puts down. And then the reader says things like, well, that's just how I feel. Well, it isn't just how they feel because every feeling has a little shade of difference. But it's close enough that it stirs that, that something inside them. And I love that you enjoy doing it. There's, there's joy in doing this writing thing, isn't there? Look, we're going to have fun. <laughs> We're going to have fun in this class. We're going to have fun with words. We're going to have fun with sentences. We're going to have fun with the truth. You know, the truth can be awfully boring because people have a wrong idea about the truth. They think it's black or white. It's not. Let me give you an example. Sure. I get up this morning. I go outside, and I look at the sunrise. I love the sunrise. All right? Look at the sunrise, and it's a bright orange, and there's, you know, orange filtering through the sky. And if somebody writes that they got up and look at the sunrise, that's what people are going to think of. Unless you live like I did on a lake in northern Maine where the sun rises silver. <clears throat> on the lake, on the horizon, the air is clear there. There's nothing to filter the colors. <clears throat> so you wake up in the morning and it's an entirely different feeling, entirely different situation. We're going to learn how to discern those differences for the reader so the reader can feel that kind of sunrise, a silver sunrise. 
which has its own beauty. Fabulous. <laughs> you illustrated beautifully what's going to happen. Thank you, Dan. Well, if you're fortunate enough to get into this writer's workshop, you will start with Dan Warner on Monday, September 12th, the first day of the Fall Academy. If you are not, maybe we'll be able to hear some of this writing. And now it's time for a delicious recipe with Ruth Duber. She's making a bubble room salad on today's show. Here's what's cooking at Shell Point. Hi, I'm Ruth Duber and this is What's Cooking at Shell Point. And I'm gonna talk a little bit today um, about the bubble room. It's up on Captiva. I'm sure maybe some of you have been up there. And the bubble room was begun by Katie Gardenia. And she has a cookbook. And it's uh, their house salad that they use up in the bubble room. And I think we'll make the dressing first. And the dressing calls for it's olive oil. I'm sure all of you have your own favorite olive oil. I prefer to use the extra virgin olive oil. I'm not real fond of a heavy olive oil taste. So uh, we're going to do a half a cup of olive oil. Now I'm just making a portion of the recipe. Uh, the one in the cookbook makes about a quart and a half. And I don't think any of us need that much salad dressing. So there's the, the oil. And then we're going to do the vinegar. And she asks for red wine vinegar. And this, we just need a quarter of a cup. So we'll add that. And then it calls for two tablespoons of water and two tablespoons of lemon juice. Now if you're really lazy, you can use the kind that's already in a, in a bottle. And I did that, so that's the two tablespoons of lemon juice. and two tablespoons of Parmesan cheese. There's the Parmesan. And a quarter of a teaspoon, it calls for sea salt. I happen to have kosher salt, and so that's what I've used. And now we need three quarters of a teaspoon of garlic powder. And it's interesting, I have had a container of garlic powder for, oh, maybe a year. And I went to check on it, and it was all hard in the bottom. So I would advise you to keep an eye on the garlic powder and the garlic salt, because it does lose its flavor after a while. So, And I'm going to get some fresh basil. I keep him out on the porch. So we're going to chop these up. And we'll do a little bit of chopping here, but we'll put it into the blender so it'll get more, more chopped. It calls for um, about two tablespoons of chopped basil, but I love it so I don't really even measure it. I just sort of put it in. So here we go. We're going to put that in there. We're going to put the lid on. We're ready to blend it up here. And I use the pulse on the blender. Now that's pretty well incorporated there. So I'm going to put this in a container. It has a nice creamy look to it there. It looks delicious because of the lack of time here. I'm just going to put it in the refrigerator while I put the, the rest of the ingredients in the salad. So we'll just put it in just for a little bit. This is a mix that I've not used before. It's called 
It's spring mix with baby spinach. So I thought that would be a nice combination for our salad today. It has a lots of color. There we go. And the other ingredient, um, she called for the heirloom tomatoes, but um, I have not found them around here, so Publix does has, have the little yellow ones. Uh, I'm sure they're just a plain grape tomato, but they happen to be yellow. So we're going to put some of these on. And I like to cut them in half. Uh, if you ever tried to spear a tomato, particularly in front of other people, they don't always spear it without squirting somebody. I think that's enough for now. And feta cheese. And so we're going to cut some of that up in there. Well, this is not the last ingredient, ingredient almost. There's a nice chunk of feta. They have it in the stores in various ways. You can buy it just in the, in the whole piece. Um, and it doesn't have liquid, but I find that this keeps much better. It'll keep a lot longer. Now the last thing that we're going to add here is sunflower seeds. And I have toasted them. Um, if you toast any kind of a nut before you use it, uh, it really brings out the flavor. So we're just going to sprinkle some of these on the top. Maybe we don't need quite all of them. And then we're ready for our dressing, which we will pretend has chilled. And we're just going to pour it over here. So we'll toss it up a little bit here. You know, we're into the, the warm summer, and so I'm always looking for, for something that you can have, this light. So there it is. Um, it's very enjoyable. I hope you try the recipe. I'm going to enjoy. Mm. Even without chilling, the dressing is delicious. Bye-bye. And now it's time to cover all today's happenings, academy news, menus, and Village Church connections. Welcome to the happenings segment of Shell Point TV. I'm Bev Chandley. I'm going to go over the activity lineup for you here today at Shell Point. Remember, your Shell Point Life magazine will be delivered today, so you want to check out everything going on around here. We're going to start with an 8 o'clock men's round robin tennis game down at the Woodlands Tennis Courts. There'll be pickleball at the game courts at 8 o'clock. At 8.45, Lily and Company Jewelers will be here for their weekly jewelry service. That's in the Resident Activity Center. Jurassi Travel will be here at 9 o'clock until noon. She'll be in the Egret Room. We have a 9 o'clock watercolor group with Phil Hilton in the Art Studio. And we have a 9.15 card making and scrapbooking group meeting in the Tarpon Room on the island. The Ladies Bible Study will be in the Osprey Room at 10 o'clock. And also at 10 o'clock, we have the men's match play tennis down at the Woodlands. At 10.15, the Mall Yacht Sailing Club will be sailing their boats at the Commons Lake. And then at 11.30, we have a Health Connections class bar ball edition. And that concludes our morning lineup. Moving into the afternoon, we have a 12.45 Health Connections class, Advanced Strength and Conditioning. That's in the health club. That's currently full. And at 1 o'clock, we have chess. That'll be played in the library lounge on the island. Balance and Mobility Advance will be in the Health Club at 1.45. And 2.30 is the time for Jazz and Stuff in the Grand Cypress Room. At 3 o'clock, we have Pilates Stretch in the Health Club. And the Church Choir will rehearse at the Choir Room of the Village Church at 5.45. And at 7.15, we have our last event of the day, and it's Prayer and Praise at the Village Church. 
Well, it's nice to see you here today, and we'll see you back here again tomorrow. Hi, I'm Terry Colath, a manager in the Resident Life Department here at Shell Point. I manage your Academy of Lifelong Learning. Maybe some of you are new to Shell Point, and I'd like to take just a moment to tell you about our registration procedures. Many, of our, many more of our residents are using our online registration system, and that's great. When you do use it, if you successfully do a registration request, a message comes up to you that you will look for your confirmation in Shell Point Mail. If you elect to register at either Service Desk, which is our other option, you will also get a, rec a confirmation of your request in your Shell Point Mail. And I urge you to look carefully at your confirmation to make sure that you did indeed get into the class you were trying to register for instead of being put on a wait list. Sometimes we have to have a wait list, and there's a good reason for that. Many of our instructors prefer a smaller, more intimate atmosphere. Perhaps they're teaching a painting class or a drawing class. Perhaps they're teaching a room full of people with their first iPads. Perhaps they're teaching people um, how to write more clearly, and they're sharing, and they want to have the group manageable. Sometimes we just can't have a larger room than we have available, and so we have to control the class size. So there may be reasons to get on a wait list. Now, we do have a cancellation policy, and that's all listed in your Academy brochure, but just to, um, to talk a minute about it, 24 hours before the class starts is fine for a cancellation policy, except sometimes we have, for instance, a trip that has to be paid for farther ahead, or a class with, say, art supplies that we have to order farther ahead. In that case, if we have a wait list, somebody from the wait list will be called to take your spot, and they will take the charges. If you have any more questions about that, please give me a call. I'd love to talk to you. And I'd love to talk to you if you'd like to participate as a presenter. Now I'd like to tell you a little bit about this semester. I'm very excited about it. We have two fascinating Coffee with a Neighbor programs right off the bat. The first one is with Martin Chappelle, our Executive Vice President for Shell Point. He's going to spend some time with the lucky people who are able to get tickets for his Coffee with a Neighbor number one. He prefers a more intimate space for interchange, and he's going to have his program in the Grand Cypress Room. If you weren't able to get a ticket, don't worry about it. You'll have other opportunities to get to know him better. George Waters of Palm Acres will also share fresh insights from his recent time in Cuba with his Coffee with a Neighbor focused on teaching videography in Cuba. We have a nice, timely look at politics this semester. We're introducing two newer residents who just happen to be political science professors. Melissa Butler of Royal Bonnet will boost our electoral knowledge and Wayne Swanson of Turban will tackle the implications of the angry voter and the current presidential election. And then he'll bring us where the debates and polls are taking us in his presentation, Debates, Polls, and What's Next. Our senior pastor of the Village Church, Reverend Andy Hawkins, will provide us with a biblical view of church and state, always of interest, and particularly now. And Dick Brown, who teaches our academy math classes that are geared to those who never liked math, will give us a fascinating look at voting systems around the world and right here in the United States. Looking at politics beyond our borders that surely do affect us here is Thomas Terrell. He's a retired international lawyer and former economic advisor to the UK, UK government. He'll discuss the rise again in Europe of those dangerous isms of the 1930s, nationalism and socialism. Yes, he will also speak to the ramifications of Brexit, as he did last semester. And then our favorite historian, Professor Adrian Kerr, has several brand new classes for us, including the world's most famous trees from history, a class on Edison, Westinghouse, and Tesla. Then he's going to explain partition to us, how England managed the separation of Southern Ireland, of Pakistan, and of India. And he has a brand new round of trivia for another Lunch with Trivia contest. There's also art. Herb Sklar of Eagles Preserve never stops coming up with new and exciting opportunities to challenge our creativity in the arts. And Debbie Melkai of Periwinkle never stops with new and exciting crafts. And we have writing, and word usage, and birds, and butterflies, and the changing face of nature. 
We are even having a birthday party for America's first great woman composer, Amy Beach. Her music is included. We have some amazing Academy on the Go educational field trips, some Legacy Foundation seminars that keep us right on top of all things financial, from the implications of Brexit on investing to identity theft. Experts will also take us into the heart of the Syria refugee crisis, and also we'll learn how photojournalism keeps us in touch with the world. And there's more. I look forward to sharing it all with you. Our resident hosts and I will be glad to greet you at the door when you come to class. We look forward to seeing you at an Academy class soon. Menus for Wednesday. In the Island Cafe, the sandwich special is a Cuban sandwich with potato salad for $7.75. Dinner specials in the Palm Grill are grilled ribeye for $20.95 or crispy baked flounder for $15.95. All menus are available 24 hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. Welcome to Village Church Connections. I'm David Pavey. If you tell the truth, you don't have to remember anything, wrote Mark Twain. But if you don't tell the truth, there will be consequences, of course. For example, some time ago at Duke University, there were four sophomores taking organic chemistry. They did so well on the quizzes and midterms and the labs that each had an A so far for the semester. So confident of good grades were these four friends that the weekend before finals, they decided to drive up to Charlottesville to the University of Virginia and, and party with some friends up there. Well, they had a great time, but after all the partying, they slept all day on Sunday and didn't make it back to Duke until early morning on Monday. Well, rather than taking the final right away, they decided to find their professor after the final and explain to him why they missed it. They explained that they had gone to UVA for the weekend with the plan to come back in time to study but unfortunately, they had had a flat tire on the way back, didn't have a spare, and couldn't get help for a long time. As a result, they had missed the final. The professor thought it over, and then agreed that they could make up the final the following day. All the students were elated and relieved. They studied that night and went in the next day at the time the professor had told them. But the professor placed each of them in separate rooms, handed each of them a test booklet, told them to begin. They looked at the first problem, worth 5% of the grade, something simple about free radical formation. Cool, they thought at the same time, each one in his separate room, this is going to be easy. Each finished the problem and then turned the page. On the second page was written, for 95% of the grade, which tire was flat? Be sure your sin will find you out, Moses warned the Israelites. Yes, truth has become a threatened virtue in our culture, and it's nothing new. In a world of universal deception, telling the truth is a revolutionary act wrote George Orwell in his book, 1984, which was first published way back in 1945. Little wonder that nowadays, every time a presidential candidate gives a speech, it's followed by what the media call a fact check, to distinguish fact from fiction. And that's serious, because the essence of leadership is trust, and how do you trust someone who doesn't tell the truth? We have come to expect the media to offer up spin and propaganda. A preacher friend of mine says that our society has truth decay. There's been another example of lies recently by another group of four men. 12-time American Olympic medalist, 32-year-old Ryan Lochte, and his three friends who raised an uproar in Rio de Janeiro during the 2016 Olympic Games, claiming to be the victims of an armed robbery. Video of the incident revealed that Lochte and his friends, who were drunk at six in the morning after partying all night, 
had vandalized a gas station restroom, were caught by an armed security guard and made to pay for the damage. They failed to admit the truth, and they, so they caused trouble for many while detracting from the games. They let down our athletes, said U.S. Olympic Committee CEO Scott Blackman. They let down Americans, and they really let down our hosts in Rio, who did such a wonderful job, and we feel very badly about that. I think we ended up in the right place in terms of being able to shine a light on what really happened there. Interviewed by NBC, Lochte could not bring himself to admit he lied. The best he could do was to confess twice in the same session that he had over-exaggerated while still under the influence of alcohol. His lie will cost him dearly. Speedo and Ralph Lauren quickly withdrew their endorsements of the swimmer. The four friends also faced discipline from the United States Olympic Committee. Lochte returned to the United States quickly. Another friend followed a day or two later, but only after reaching a deal with the judge to make a $10,800 payment. The trip home for the other two friends was even more eventful. After boarding their flight, authorities removed the pair from the jet as police wanted more information. They were permitted to board a later flight. I wish I could feel sorry for them, said a member of the Olympic Committee. Instead, I feel that they should have been honest from the beginning. What they did was wrong, but what was even more wrong, it was ridiculous that they didn't stand up and tell the truth. Who would it have hurt to tell the truth? No one. And who did it hurt not to tell the truth? It insulted a whole nation. The Gospel of John reports that Jesus came into the world full of grace and truth. In fact, he said, I am the truth. When questioned by Pontius Pilate, Jesus said, I was born and I came into the world to testify to the truth. All who love the truth recognize that what I say is true. To which Pilate asked, what is truth? To the Christians in Ephesus, the Apostle Paul wrote, we will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies, lies so clever that they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ. Now that's a noble goal for Christians. Speak the truth. Honesty is still the best policy. And thank you for tuning in once again to Village Church Connections. Thanks for joining us for today's show. Join us tomorrow when we'll take you out to the Calusa Blue Way Paddling Trails with the Director of Resident Life, Laura Slack. She'll teach you all about the fun of kayaking. And we'll continue with more beautiful aerial footage of Shell Point. Until then, this has been Shell Point Today for Wednesday, August 31st. I'm Adam Brown, thanking you for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.